I'm doing so much better now that I'm speaking with the vocalist, pianist, composer extraordinaire, and that the audience just got a sneak peek, just a sneak peek of your amazing talent with Up in the Air. Lauren Lee, I want to know, was there jazz in all of these old school, I hate saying old school, but whatever it is a little bit, Americana, you know, cool cats, jazz cats playing in your house growing up no <laughs> and of course i've been gunning that to ask, ask that question and of course it's like eh, no will what was playing in your house and if it was nothing how did you come across this gorgeous genre of music that you just took the baton of and made your own so i grew up on uh, a lot of classic rock and like progressive rock and progressive rock and jazz are like this um so that is actually that was how I I why I think I started liking the genre in the be, in the beginning but I grew up uh in a really rural part of the country I grew up in southern Illinois where there's not really a lot going on but it was close to St. Louis Missouri like about an hour and a half uh, outside and St. Louis is a wonderful place for jazz history. There are a lot of really wonderful, famous jazz musicians that came from there. So when I got a little bit older and I could kind of start to uh, explore things on my own, I was like, wow, this was right here. And I had no idea. But as like I got even older than that, like into my 20s and stuff like the, the pieces started to be put together in my head because I was like, oh, well, you know, I grew up listening like with my dad to bands like, I don't know, like Yes, which is very jazz influenced. And I was like, oh, no wonder I like jazz because I always liked this. So it makes sense. Well, Lauren, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned this because, you know, when, when I've spoken with dancers before, you know, even the ones that ended up not going into specifically ballet, they all like had a foundational studying in ballet. And I feel like for the musicians in whatever genre they end up pursuing professionally, those that kind of even just began with their love of jazz, it, it's just like a strong foundational point. Did, do you find that as well? Yes. Yeah, like I feel like it's much more energy that's kind of, it takes much more energy to try to separate genres of music rather than to look at what they have in common because there's so much commonality. Um, and like I spoke about when I was a kid, like growing up on classic rock and prog rock, when I was in college, I was in a conservatory classical voice program which was an interesting choice uh, now, but I was singing a lot of contemporary classical music, like classical music written in the 20th century. And that is also very closely related to jazz, but it was always kind of treated in this academic way where like these things are separate. And it's like, it, there's so much in common. And now that I'm older, I see it, I'm like, oh, everything that I like and everything that influences my writing totally makes sense. It all, it's all the same thing what fundamentally. Else? Well, what I also love, I mean, and people, they have to look you up and all the links are below this video of you, Lauren Lee, because you are not only an, an amazing pianist and a vocalist, but I love the idea that you are you have the ability to go at 30,000 feet as a creator and a composer to really kind of 
to really kind of pervade the, the landscape of how all of these different disciplines actually are threads within the same quilt. And for you, my, one of my questions was, you know, as someone who's also an acclaimed improviser, um, I'm curious how that interest came about for you, or was it very natural? It was not natural at all, because I came from studying classical music, and when you learn in that tradition, everything is very exact. regimented. Yeah, it's all written down, and you have to, the goal, if you are a classical performer, is that you can recreate something the same way at the same very high level every single time. And in improvised music, the goal is to not do that. Like you want to have perform performances that are at a high level, but the goal is to not have them do the same, like at all, every time. So learning that tradition was really hard for me. I pretty much had to rewire my brain. And it was, it was like the equivalent of learning how to read a different language or learning how to walk after some kind of, I mean, maybe not that drastic, but it was, but it was very different. And I, I did it when I was um, in, I started doing it when I was in college. So I was like 18, 19, 20, 21 years old when I started even trying to do that. And by that point, our brains are pretty formed, like they're pretty solid. So it was really hard to do that. But once I got the hang of it, I was like, wow, where has this been all of my life? Because now it's my favorite thing to do. It's my favorite thing to talk about. It's my favorite thing to teach. Like, so it's, it's interesting, but it was totally different. It was not natural for me at all. <laughs> you know what I also love, Lauren, though? And, you know, in thinking about this particular segment of, well, specific tool within your tool belt, which there are many tools, mm -hmm. is that like, I, I just kept thinking like the discipline it must have taken for you to study the genres that you study, to then go into improvisation, that that same kind of commitment to craft. It takes a certain focus because I think a lot of people, when they think about improvisation, they think, you know, whether it's music or comedy, oh, it's just a, it's just a talent. They're just making it up on the spot. They must just be brave. But it's like, no, it's probably, it takes that much more craft to not only undo, but to <laughs> relearn. So I'm just really happy you're speaking about it because I don't know if people really understand in the trenches what it's like. They don't. And I'm really glad that you brought that up because that's, it's always so challenging when I talk to people about it who don't know, who never studied improvisation or improvisational anything. And so like, oh, you just do whatever. And that's not it at all. It's I would like an improvisation to be the same way that you could have a conversation. Correct. So I didn't know what questions you were going to ask me. I didn't know what we were going to talk about. I knew it was going to be something related to what I do musically. Um, but the same way that I can come up with language to describe what I do to you is the same thing that I do as an improviser. So if I'm improvising on a pre-existing tune that you know somebody else wrote, or if I'm improvising on a tune that I wrote, or whatever, I have kind of some guided information, but I have to know how to interpret that and what kind of vocabulary I can use. And that, that's all the stuff that I had to learn previously and then draw upon it the same way that we draw upon our vocabulary for speaking to have conversations with people. I mean, look, for someone who studied for many years in improv comedy, I get the yes and. I know it's very yes. simple for improv musicians. It's again, it's like, what's the assignment? What's the conversation? What's the overall, you know, again, what's the, yeah, what's the overall conversation or assignment of it? And then just kind of, you know, filling in the shades as it goes, but it's going not only with your gut or as audiences might say, you know, yeah. so courageous to be doing that. You're like, well, actually <laughs> it's all studied within an inch of its life, but thank you so much. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to put that out there. Okay, Lauren yes. Lee, question for you. Um, final question is, you know, obviously these past 18 months have been tough for all humans, but especially mm -hmm. artists. How have you, dare I say, been able to improvise your way through these 18 months and just keeping those music and creative juices flowing well i did a couple of big things i wrote a book um it's oh a, you know i don't know just as you do <laughs> you know as you do 
Yeah, it's, a, it's an improvisation exercise book for vocalists that's uh, based in music theory and not just based in like learning licks and like stamping them all over things that don't make sense. Um, so I did that. I recorded most of a record that was released in April. Um, and I did a lot of like live streaming, which was fun for a minute. And it was it was cool, but I, I the the point of the live stream was that I got to learn a lot of music that I, I had always wanted to learn. And I was like, cool, I'm sitting here doing this. It might be nice to share it. So I did. And so I had this like all in concert series where I would, you know, play and sing the music of Pat Metheny only for one week. I would do I did one week of Bjork, which she's my favorite. So I was like, yes, we're gonna do that. I did one of Joe Henderson, you know, like it was, it was cool to kind of tie my love for like, oh, I finally have time for, to practice a lot with, oh, all my gigs got canceled for the unforeseen like future. So I can marry these things and it's low pressure and it's cool. And well, you know. I love that you were able to use your skill set, dare I say, as an improviser to improvise during this time to not only <laughs> still do what you do and do what you love, but to also look at it as an opportunity to challenge yourself, but to also lean into your, you have this childlike sense of wonder and curiosity about you that um, is infectious. I can feel it across the Zoom screen and also just researching who you are. And I think um, you're not only an inspiration, I'm sure, to those who are fans of yours, but also to those that you get to teach. And um, I'm very grateful for your time today. And again, I just want to remind our audience for more on the incredible Lauren Lee, you can read more about it right below this video. Lauren Lee, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much for having me.